we brought 60 games back from Essence Beal. Actually, maybe a little bit over 60 games. I'm not quite sure. I have a spreadsheet. I haven't done a haul video in a little while because it always feels weird to me to do haul videos. It's like, hey, look at these things that I have that you don't have. But it's kind of like a preview of like streams and thought processes and stuff. And also you get a sneak preview about my thoughts about the games that we've played. I'm going to start with small games and then we're going to work our way up. There's stacks all throughout the living room and I'm just grabbing stacks at this point. Okay, so first up is... This is the squeakiest part of my floor, and I always choose to stand here to record these videos. It's the best. First up is Quan, which is from one of the Japanese game companies. It's a two-player only strategy game. You're trying to place tiles to connect stuff. It, it comes with like an interesting mat. It was, it was interesting. I don't know. I read this stuff for that two years ago. Two years ago. A long time ago when they first opened pre-orders on it, and I thought it would be interesting for Steve and I, so I picked it up. Uh, then we have Ramen. Ramen was one of the games that I did a Twitter preview of. It's a card game where it's a little bit trick ticky, um, where there's suits and there are five suits and each suit has one through nine, the card values, and you're trying to make sets and you play them by like basically drafting, but the order of the draft depends on like the power of the suit and the number and the suits are all ramen ingredients and you're trying to create sets of unique suits and your score at the end of the game is your largest set multiplied by the number of valid sets you have and a valid set is at least three ingredients so steve and i well i love ramen steve can't eat ramen um but yeah i picked it up and the designers um shay and isa were like super awesome and actually gifted us a copy and we played it with them and it was fun we actually bought a copy for our friends as well so we actually have two of these because one they gifted us and one we bought because it was fun and we think our friend will really enjoy it. Our friend who is <laughs> who um, is Cuban who just married a Japanese woman. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's interesting because um, the designers are from Spain. That's why the Cuban part. Anyway, next up, Penny Papers! So this is another roll and write series that I've been seeing stuff about for a while and I've wanted to try it, but it's really hard to get it in the states um slash not possible to get in the states but there's three different ones currently out and they're all roll and rights that work a little similarly but not they can play with as many players as you want and this one is the valley of Wiracachoa and you're like making you're making sets of numbers and then like pairs or three of a kinds or anything like that and then you four of a kind sorry and then you're like drawing icons and stuff. This one was less interesting. We got another one, which is the temple of something. And that one's a lot more interesting. And then somebody said Skullline wasn't great. So we didn't get that one. But um, yeah, it's a, another roll and rate. Which we got a number of those. Twin it! This was not on my most anticipated list that I publicly aired, but it was on my private one. So this is from the designer that did um, Jungle Speed, which is a fun grabby pattern matching game. And it's a pattern matchy game, except for when you match patterns, like pairs, you take them and you put them in front of you, and then there are three of each type of pattern in the decks. So there's a chance, there's a high likelihood that your pattern that you've already matched a pair of will come up again, and when it does, someone can steal your pair from you by matching the third one with your pair. So that's really interesting. Um, I like these little games. I usually get one a con. This was the one I got. I haven't played it yet. Couldn't find it in English. Kept looking, couldn't find it. It's in German, but I just basically taught you, so it's fine. This one we actually got in Amsterdam before we arrived at the show. This is Strife. Um, Steve played this a couple years ago. It's a two-player only game where it does an interesting mechanic where you play cards to, to one location and then it retires to a secondary location. So when you play it the first time, it activates one power, but then it well, it has a secondary power on it that will activate when it's in the second location that will affect the outcome of the first location. It, yeah, it's it's a little brain trippy. Steve tried to teach it to me when I was way too jet lagged and tired, but I can see the appeal. So it's a two player game that Steve picked out that we got in Amsterdam. Um, we actually didn't get this game in Essen, but I still brought it back. So we, I bought Steve Maiden's Quest a while ago because he likes to play solo games and he likes to play while wandering around, it's a thing. He's read the rules on this several times We've traveled with it to several trips and states and now countries. The cards are still in shrink. So, 
And it's not, it's not a light box. But yes, we brought this back from Amazon. And then we have bricks. This is the first of two Tetris tabletop roll and write games that we have. But this is the one designed by the designer of The Mind, or Gonchon Clever. Yeah, so this one is Tetrisy. Do you want in? There's a lot of Tetris games this year. This was one of several. Um, it was, though. So, Bricks. Haven't played it yet. I'm just gonna have like a Tetris roll and write night, and we're just gonna play a bunch of them. There's actually just a Tetris night because there's a couple games that are just Tetris -y. That was that stack. Let's get another. Woo -hoo -hoo. Here we go. Next stack. Squeaky, 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 squeaky. I don't know how to fix this. These floors are original, which means they're 90 years old, and I know why the squeak happens. I just have to figure out how to fix it. Anyway. First up on the stack is Tiny Welcome 2! So, Blue Cocker did this like Essen promo mini edition of Welcome 2 where if you bought a copy of Welcome 2 you could get this edition. It comes with six miniature, like they're this big, score sheets and then six dry erase markers and then it has a shrunk deck. Um, so the, there's only like 20 something cards in it, I don't know. But it's a little tuck box, it's not very travel friendly. I mean the sizes, but the tuck box won't hold up for very much. Um, it's kind of more of like a novelty item, a quick play game, maybe. Um, they gave me it because of uh, Benoit gave me it, thank you Benoit, uh, because of all the work that I did for Welcome To and marketing and stuff. Um, so yeah, but it's very cute. The score sheets are so tiny, it's kind of annoying to write on actually. So from like a playing standpoint, it's not super practical, but it's super cute. I gotta go let Zena. <laughs> Did you know my glasses were transition lenses? Cause you do now. All right, um, so yeah, that was welcome too. So then we have Shibuya, which is another small Japanese uh, game. It's two to four players. I read the rules on this months ago when I pre-ordered it. Cannot remember anything about it. It's the problem with the Japanese ones. Cause they open their pre-orders so early and then they sell out so fast. And so you have to like do the research and then it just, like months before the show. I always forget it. Penny Papers! This is the other one. This is the, our favorite one. Um, this is the Temple of Aki... Apikaboo? Haha! <laughs> Temple of Apikaboo. Um, this one we really like because in both of them, in all of the Penny Papers games, there's one die that when the face is rolled, you get to like mess with each other's sheets. And this one we like because you draw mummies and it's really easy to mess with people, but it's not so complicated, whereas the other one's kind of like, eh. Yeah. Cumbria! This is the expansion dice tray. Ooh. Um, it's, so, you like, uh, so it's the dice tray. The whole box is the dice tray, so it opens like this. And the designer, Chris, or the artist, Chris, drew, drew a nice picture for us. Um, but it's just, a, and it, there's a plastic felt lined tray inside um, that you roll in. And that's kind of nice. I'm not sure how I feel about it having this kind of lid for a dice tray, but um, there's an extra crease on it, so I'm like, maybe... Oh! Well, it'd be better if that was magneted. But that's nice. You can, like, dice tray like that. Um, but the expansion is literally just these four dice, which are multicolored, and then these four pawns. And you the the this card is like very sturdy i don't know why but it's a bell and then there's influence dice i don't know the bells drop down or something i don't i don't, I don't know but we're gonna play it we'll find out we really like Combria, so it was kind of a no-brainer for us to grab that and that was another small stack of games let's grab another Ugh. okay this one is we got this last year oh whoa it got super messed up so this is Carcassonne for two. So this is the two player 10 version of Carcassonne. It just has smaller Carcassonne tiles and then smaller meeples and then it only has enough tiles for two players. And that's literally it. It's nothing super special or anything, but um, it was on discount and Steve and I actually already own this and we really, really like ours because we take it all the time to our local tap room to play. Um, because we're not, it's, it's very light, fits in pockets, because the table, the tiles are smaller, it like fits on the, um, the little bar tables, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, and then, 
it's very simplified, and we know Kyrgyzstan, so we don't need English rules. It's only in German. And I don't think they're going to ever bring it to us, because apparently it didn't do very well in German. Sorry, that 10 guy just really messed up. Um, but we bought another one to give as a gift. And this one's all messed up, so maybe we keep this one and give ours as a gift. But that's, that's that. Then we have 1906 San Francisco. Haven't played this yet. I really want to. This is um, one where it has, uh, you randomly build the board every time and the board is just like rubble of San Francisco and your urban developers rebuilding San Francisco. And the action selection is a rondelle that goes around this cardboard, but the rondelles, the action spaces are on cards and that's randomized every game too and you always have to move clockwise around. So every game will have different action availability for the rondelle, which is interesting to me. It might be broken, I don't know, I want to see. Because it's an interesting idea for like a small box game. Now we're on to the next stack. So, Farmini! So Loki Games is a new kids line from Yellow, and their mascot is a corgi. So of course I went by their booth every day, you can see that in the vlogs. Um, but they released three new games at the show, and one of them is Farmini, which is a card game it's kind of like tile placement, so the cards just have farm fences on them in different patterns and you're playing, the, on your turn you select a card and you play it and when you select animals you can put them on certain spots on cards inside of pens and you want to make sure your animals are penned in because there's randomly wolves that'll come out and chase out people's animals. So yeah, it's very cute, it's very easy to play, it's two to four um, players, or it's one to four players plays very, very fast, um, and Steve and I actually enjoyed it. it. It's like little strategic, and it would be fun to play with the nieces, and you know, just like bar, bar stuff, so yeah. And there's a corgi on the back, don't, it's not related. This was our second copy of Ramen, which I already talked about. And then we have Claim 2, which is still in shrink. So Claim is Steve and I's favorite two-player trick-taking game. We love it, absolutely love it. Um, we actually got another copy of it at spiel but this is claim two it has new factions um forget the quantity of factions five new factions and steve and i have actually already played the factions because um scott sent us the uh print and play files so we've already played it uh we liked it a lot and our version of claim actually is still claim two because we like printed them out and put them sleeved into our version so now we have an official copy of claim two so we can make our claim copy a normal claim but we actually ended up getting for essen For Essen, White Goblin made these little pocket claims. So it's like the same size container as like Iota or Punto, but it's claim. And we love claim so much, so we had to buy one. We had to buy one. We've yet to play it, but we were hopeful. We were gonna play on our flight and then we weren't sitting next to each other, so we didn't play it. Love claim, check it out. Nobody has it in the US yet. Makes me sad. This was our random find of the show. This is Flip Over Frog. So this is a card game where you are trying, you have a secret identity and there's four different animals, so you can have one of the four different animals. And at the end of the game, you wanna have your animal be most common. And it's super easy. When you play a card, the cards have arrows on them and the arrows point to cards adjacent that flip. Um, except for when you play cards, you can only play them to the backs of flipped cards or blank spaces. And if you play them to a black of a flip card and then eventually your card gets flipped, the card that was under the card you played is now face up, so it's like a memory element because you have to remember what's under where when you play. It's very interesting. Steve and I really, really liked it. This was kind of our find game of the year for that. Papering Duel! So this was uh, from Korean publisher, Mainju. Um, this is a two player only game. It uses transparent cards and you place them to create basically three of a kind or three of a, three in a row of a specific attributes, so either color or pattern. Um, and at the end of your turn, you mark which ones you've created three in a row of, and your opponent has to break those three in a rows and establish their own, or you win. And that's it. But transparent card, two player, abstract strategy game. This one we actually got in Amsterdam. This has been out for a while in um, other parts of the world. This is Daksu from J. Alex Kevern. Kevern? Sorry, I'm trying to remember if we have, we do. He did Gold West. I was like, this designer name is super familiar. Um, we like 
J. Alex Kevrin's games. Um, and this is one that one of our friends, Daryl Andrews, said was pretty good. So we picked it up on his, like, suggestion. Plus, we've looked at it a couple times in Amsterdam when we're there, because it came out in, like, 2015. So, yeah. So we went ahead and picked it up, because we thought it would come to the States. It hasn't come to the States. So we're going to try it. And then this is the other Tetris game. So this is Blocks. Um, on the last day of Spiel, uh, Suze tweeted out that this Roll and Write Tetris game is designed by the designer of Carcassonne. And she was like, holy smokes, you should get it. Well, no one had it, but I randomly found it on a booth, like one of the German sale booths, so I just bought it, and the guy didn't know how much it was, and he was like, uh, nine euros? And I was like, okay. So, <laughs> I got this! I haven't played it yet. Like I said, Tetris rolling right night, anyone? Uh. There's one more small box game I forgot about. I already put it over here. That was wrong, there was four more games. Okay. Railroad Inc. Red Edition, and Blue Edition! Um, I'm not looking at the camera on this episode, I'm really sorry. Uh, we already own these, both of them. We already like them, but my nephew came to stay and he played a bunch of games with us and these were, hands down, his favorite games. So we went ahead and this was actually, these were the first games we actually purchased at Essen. I was like, they're gonna sell out! So I rushed and got them for him for Christmas. So there you go. I actually did a video called um, Games uh, I'd Buy Again at Essen, uh, which were like the Essen release titles that I would buy again. And hey, these were on there. So there's that. Next up, Architecture! So this one is interesting. I haven't played it yet. It's a tile placement game, but it's card instead of tiles. And when you place them, they have like little abilities and they have a score modifier. But when you place adjacent to another tile, it like rotates it, so it modifies its score. Um, I'm really interested in playing it. There's a lot of tile placement city building games this year, like a lot. And this was the smaller one, and it looks really interesting from like a uh, ability standpoint because it's not like a random deck that everybody shares. Every player has their own deck, which is symmetrical. And then if you want to play more advanced, you can like build your own decks to be asynchronous. So yeah, this one interests me from like a symmetrical strategy tile placement game. And then speaking of games we already own that we bought again, it's Sunny Day. Love Sunny Day. Sunny Day was our random love find from last year. So I actually bought two copies um, at Essen this year because it's not been in the States yet. But uh, word Little Birdie told me that, uh, well this publisher told me that a US based publisher has picked it up. They're just trying to figure out if they're just gonna go direct to market or if they're gonna do Kickstarter. I don't really know. But I love Sunny Day, um, so we bought two more copies. I've already gifted one. Um, this one is for my mom. This is gonna be my mom's one of my mom's Christmas presents. So yeah, because she wanted she requested a copy of this when we played it with her last Christmas, and I was like, "You can't have mine. I love you, but no." So yeah, I think that's it for small games. Wow. I think you have to count this as a small game. So, Caverna! Cave vs. Cave 2. So I thought this was an expansion, but this can be a standalone game. I was punching it, and I was like, these look really like a full game, and it is. So if you want to play it as an expansion, you play Arrow 1, which is the first one, and then you play this one. But if you want to just play this one, they have rules for that. So, um, we haven't done that yet, but we're probably going to, you like, add it to... You add this new cave addition to the old cave, um, and then there's new rooms and some new um, resource types. Like there's donkeys, um, some sort of blue mineral, I don't know what it's called. But yeah, so Steve and I like cave versus cave a lot, so we got that. Um, speaking of things that we liked a lot and we got that I no longer have a box for, um, the Caverna expansion. Uh, so this is how most of our games come home from Essen is in these bags, um, and I label what it is. So this is the Caverna Fairy Folk expansion, which we did pick up, and I punched, and the box has been abandoned. I just have to figure out how to fit it into our box. And we have the broken token insert, so it makes putting stuff in easy, but not. Does the floor creaking bother anyone but me? Can you even hear it? I keep finding games! Hey, it's another small game! It's Knights! 
So, um, I am a really big fan of the Van Ryder um, books, which are from Makaka uh, editions. They're like graphic novel choose your own adventures. I'm a big fan of them. I've played three of them now, and we were in Amsterdam at the game store, and Steve found another one! So this is apparently from like, a first, I don't know when this one came out, but this was Blue Orange did this, and um, they did the English version, and so I don't, this was in 2016, and was originally published in France in 2012. So Blue Orange did this in Europe. I guess, and Steve just like found one on a discount shelf. So we got one, we don't know anything about it. I'm super excited to play it. Um, I just played Your Town yesterday again. <sighs> it's so hard. Boosh, global twister. So this is the puzzle sorty one. This was my number two on my most anticipated list. Um, where there's a scrambled picture and then you have to like program it to, to unscramble it. And it lives up to expectations. We played it um, when we were at Essen. We played it one night and everybody liked it. Everybody's like, oh my god, I'm awful at this. This is awful. Let's play again. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it delivers, does what it says on the 10. We'll probably have a stream of this. But basically, you take a picture and you mix it up. You jumble it up as much as you can. And then you pass it to your opponent under a thing so they can't see the jumble. And then you... Everybody says go and they like lift the cover on their puzzles and they have to program and then when they think that they've written a program they say they flip a timer and then that says like everybody has a minute left to program and then once the timer's done everybody executes their programs and it's gonna take you like two or three program writings to untwist everything but that's kind of the fun of it so yeah the art is really cool the pictures are really funny and it just leads to interesting like screw up mistakes so we like this one a lot. Hey, it's another game that we already own that we bought again. It's Sunflower Valley! So, we actually... So, the original Sunflower Valley is this beautiful, adorable, handmade from FoolyAnalog.com uh, things. So he would make these in his garage, like hand assemble these games, and it was super great. These are awesome. They are laminated and they come with dry erase markers and like nice wooden dice and it's a small little box and it's very well done and Hobby World picked it up and Hobby World it. So it's the same exact game. The rule book is like word for word the same. They just put it in a bigger box. They made the sheets a little bigger. They included colored cheaper dry erase markers and then they did custom dice that have the sheeps and the sunflowers and stuff like that and it was I wasn't gonna buy it and then I saw the custom dice and I was like So we bought it. So we're definitely going to do a stream of this because we've been wanting to stream this, but we like can't because nobody could get it because he did very limited print runs and they were really expensive. I think you even had to import them because he's in Germany or something. So yeah, but it's two to five players. It's a dice drafting train roll and write game. I really like it. Um, as far as like train roll and write games that have come out in my Essen would buy again video. There's three of them. There's Railroad Inc. and there's Sunflower Valley and then there's Steamrollers. Uh, I think this one is way more interactive than uh, Railroad Inc. I like this one more than Steamrollers and I like Railroad Inc. more than Steamrollers. I think I like Railroad Inc. more than this one but that's just because Railroad Inc. there's zero player interaction like literally none at all but this one there's actually player interaction so that one's really good. I don't know if we'll keep that copy of Sunflower Valley. Uh, it might go in the library. We have a library for the convention that I'm starting. So there's that. Okay. Small Islands! This is one that I originally looked at because of Steve, because it's boats and you build islands. So think like Akateri meets something. I'm, I'm blanking right now. I wish I could remember. This is when I read the rules on and then just like, I'm blinking. But you drop tiles and place them and when you place them you can put stuff, your like houses on them, but you can only put one house per, one of your houses on each island. So if somebody adds to it later and makes it better, like you can't go back. Um, so yeah, and then you can decide to ship to get goods and things. I can't remember. I'm really sorry, but uh, read the rule book. It made my list. It's really pretty. I'm excited to play it. And the back is in Korean and Chinese. 
in Japanese and thus I can't cheat and read off the back. And then we have Magic Fold. So this is from the same company that did Fold It and Battlefold. This is their offering for this year. It's Magic Fold. This was a review copy. They gave it to us. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, you um, need to fold. There's cards that are out. You need to fold your th thingy to match the spell pattern on the cards to claim the card. And then the card says how far you get to move along this board. So it's like, it's not a roll and write. It's a fold and it's not a roll and move, it's a fold and move. Ah, it's a fold and move. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's probably going to have the same problem that Battle Fold and Fold It both had for us, which is once we learn how to do the folds, we're just going to like ace it, but that's okay. We actually still have Battle Fold. It's kind of fun. Maybe we'll stream both. But it's one of the ones where this one you can play with um, two players pretty easily. Battle Fold two players kind of... Which is why we haven't streamed it yet. But there you go. Speaking of review copies from Happy uh, Bow Bob, uh, we have Layers. So Layers is on my list. So Layers uses, I thought they were like punch board sprues. They're not, they're like plastic cards. But they're plastic cards with double-sided color patterns. And there's a card that's flipped and it shows you a pattern and you have to layer your cards to match the pattern. And different cards require different quantities of these. Um, we thought it would be really silly. It is kind of silly, but there's some really small subtleties in these patterns that you don't notice with the color distinction on these cards. So it actually ended up being a lot trickier than we thought it would. It was fun. We enjoyed it. Um, we'll be streaming this, um, definitely. Uh, it lived up to the hype. I enjoyed it. Yes. Alright, ditch the hoodie. Getting hot. Alright, next up, Azul, the stained glass of Sintra. Um, this is also a review copy. Thank you, Next Move, for providing this for us. This is the next edition of Azul. So it uses the Azul drafting mechanic, but the player boards that you're putting on the tiles onto are actually like player boards that are randomly assembled every game. They're like pans, uh, panels, panes, and you have to put the stuff on. So because every player's board is the same, like it's all made up of the same pieces, but the sequence that they're in is random every time you play because you mix them up and it just makes the game a lot more interesting for us from a drafting side. We've only played it once but already I'm like this is a lot harder to math out because in normal Azul, unless you're playing on the B side where you can make your own pattern, everybody has to do the same pattern anyway so like you know when people are going for certain things and things like this. This adds a sequence element where you can only work to the right of where your dude is and you actually have to pass a turn in drafting to move back. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. Um, we need to play it again, for sure. We will definitely be streaming this. So there's that. Azul. Tile placement in Gingerbread House. So this is from Phil Walker Harding, the designer of Baron Park. This is a tile placement game where you're placing domino style tiles on top of like your board. And whenever you cover stuff up, you gain little tokens that match the thing you covered up, and then you use those gingerbread bits that you've acquired to lure um, different fairy tale creatures into your house, which scores you points. Um, and every time you complete a layer of your house, you gain bonuses that will give you additional points for certain types of creatures you've captured. So, yeah, it's really straightforward. It's super easy. Steve and I played it one night when we were both super jet lagged and tired and we both got it and Steve kicked my butt and he was like falling asleep at the table. So there's that. But it's a lot simpler and straightforward. It says ages eight and over. I think you could probably play this honestly with like a seven year old or a six year old if they're a gamer. Um, but yeah, I, I should have... <sighs> my tone of voice is basically I was expecting something a little bit more thinky like Baron Park. Um, Baron Park is straightforward and very simple, but it's it's got a little bit more of like brain matter on it. This is like this is almost like four kids. Like the characters are cute and everything is cute. There's some undertones that are kind of funny for adults, but this is like Shrek. This is like Shrek levels. There's a lot of Shrek references in it too, but like yeah, it's it's more of like a lower kid family game. So there's Ginger. It's good. I enjoy it. I don't know if we'll hold on to it after the stream. Um, probably play it with my family, maybe, and then it probably is just gonna go. So, yeah, it's a little too base for us. You know what I mean? We're not super into the gingerbread fairy tale world, which is a lie, I'm totally into it, but 
Mm -hmm. Whoo! 18 Lilliput. It's a smaller game. Box. It's a heavier game. This is an 18x card game and I want to play it so bad. I need to just like sit down and learn the rules. I tried to read the rule book, but I couldn't get through it at the time. And I was like, I'm going to buy this anyway, so why am I even bothering? Um, but this is an 18x card game. It's a card game that's 18x game. Um, it removes some of the stock manipulation and focuses more on the track railing. Um, but yeah, it really interests me from that standpoint. So there's that. Uh, pop up. But there's no tripod, it's just me holding my phone, which is the camera, I'm sorry. Uh, so we interrupt this Essen Hall video for Xena to eat her breakfast in the Mountain of Games. Um, and for me to say, I was editing this video and it was 30 minutes long, and I was like, that's way too long! So, I'm cutting it in half, this is the halfway mark, and part two will be later this week. So, there you go. Part two will have more of the larger box titles, um, the heavier games, etc. And yeah, so you can enjoy that coming later this week. But if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure you don't miss out on part two, go ahead and subscribe. And if you haven't seen them yet, the day, whatever, the Essen vlogs, which we um, filmed and then edited and did like a one day turnaround, they're all up and they've been available. And so if you haven't watched those, go ahead and watch those. So yeah, there you go. I'm going to go record the intro for the part two video because I need to do that and and then I'm gonna go back to editing so yeah I hope you have a wonderful day also go vote vote yeah if you live in the US and you haven't voted yet just vote vote please don't care what you vote for well I, I do care but it's your choice so I would just re politely request that you vote and use democracy uh, as it was intended so there you go all right going back down here